with Overwatch recently announcing Roll Queue for competitive play, and Sigma the new hero, I was under the impression that the game may be slightly more coordinated as their intentions were when the game first came out. The game Overwatch is interesting because it's comprised of three different roles primarily. That's healer, tank, and DPS. Now, you could segment it even more to off healer, off DPS, you know, off tank, but the reality is, let's not go there. That's not the purpose of this video. The purpose of this video is from my experience playing ranked with Roll Queue thus far, I found it's done nothing really to help with people's attitude towards the people they're playing with. What I mean by this is people are incredibly toxic and it could become bothersome to those that are just looking to wind down after a stressful day. So I wanted to make this video to share my thoughts with how I personally overcome toxicity in hopes that maybe you can help you enjoy the game a little bit more. Because in the end of the day, that's really all we're trying to do is play this game to have fun. I understand people are serious about it, but you can still be serious in a way that doesn't ruin other people's experience. So let's get into the first tip. Overwatch is a team game. I always try to tell my team, we don't need to be better players than them. We don't even need to have better aim than they do. But if we coordinate as a team, the chances of us winning is far greater than us not working together. The majority of the teams that win don't even do so because they're better. They just coordinate better. If any of you guys watch Overwatch League, the Chengdu Hunters should not be performing as well as they do. They never follow the meta. They play off heroes that are considered nerfed at the time, and they still win. Why is that? That's because they have such great synergy and they coordinate so well with each other and they understand just play what you know. By doing so, they're able to play off each other's strengths and throw people off because they don't know how to react because they didn't prepare for that composition. The same applies to us. You don't have to be playing at a professional level to understand the importance of coordination. So this leads me to my first problem with people that are generally toxic online. And that's they never recognize that they could potentially be at fault. Now, I'm not saying every time somebody calls you out, they're personally at fault. But from my experience, when people tend to call other people out, they never even consider in their mind, could I possibly be part of the problem as well? And if this individual that I'm upset with is performing poorly or throwing the game, is there anything in my power that I can do to alleviate the stress this person is causing both on the group and myself? Instead of trying to be proactive, we act reactive. That's not going to solve anything because you're reacting to their responses. Instead, just ignore them if they're not willing to participate in the group event and do your best to try to resolve the issue to the best of your ability. Even if you lose the game, at least you can walk away with experience dealing with conflict and hopefully you can learn more about your hero, more about the map design, more about trying to carry people that aren't willing to commit themselves. But at least if you look at it from a proactive standpoint, You'll be less stressed out, and when you encounter losses that are beyond any chance of saving, at least you can see the positives in the negative. A lot of the people that are toxic are generally poor communicators. They have very poor conflict resolution skills. They've never worked on them. They've never really encountered them. Most people that are quick to jump the gun and become toxic generally don't have much life experience outside of staying in their house and playing video games. It's an overinflated sense of self-worth and they feel that everybody is beneath them. How do you deal with someone like this? Well, don't react negatively and try to spar with them because as Winston Churchill says, never argue with an idiot, they'll always beat you with experience. So what I can recommend to you to do is take what they say for face value. If they're being toxic, if they're being sarcastic, if they're trying to be passive aggressive, let me, I will give you a perfect real example. Someone, I was playing Baptiste, I'm a terrible healer, but I queued for roll queue for healers because I figured if I'm in the lowest rank there is, at least I'm not throwing because I'm just genuinely terrible, but the people in my group are also at that skill level as me, so at least I'm trying. As long as I'm trying to win, I still feel that's not throwing, even if I'm terrible, because at some point I have to learn. So I'm playing Baptiste, and I wasn't terrible, I was keeping everybody alive for the most part, and more importantly, I was calling out alts before they happened. Reaper, for example. I saw Reaper was above us, so I was, sc not screaming, but I was very uh, passionate in voice comms. And not screaming at anybody, you're saying, guys, watch it, Reaper's coming, Reaper's coming, Reaper's gonna all death blossom, death blossom, death blossom. Of course, Reaper death blossomed, and of course, an individual did not move out of the group. 
our Reaper, on our team. I dropped the immunity, and he was screaming, saying, you know, the immunity doesn't protect against Reaper's Death Blossom. And I say, I understand what you're saying. Unfortunately, I called it out before he Death Blossomed in hopes that we would move out of the way. As I saw you weren't moving, I dropped it in hopes to give you a second chance just to wraith out of there so you didn't get killed. He then continued to ramble on about how I was a terrible Baptiste and I should just be banned from the game, I should be removed from the game. He wished there was a kick option for Baptiste. What am I going to do? I'm not going to convince him. It'd be a waste of my time and energy. So all I can do is take what he says for face value. I say, thank you for letting me know. I'm still learning Baptiste. Maybe next time, if we can try to be more self-aware of when other people are calling out comms, we can try to avoid this and try to win the next round. The next round comprised of him focusing on our team and how our team is doing poorly instead of focusing on trying to win the game. As a result, of course, we lost. But there's nothing anybody could really do because we were essentially one player short. He was standing in spawn. He was teabagging nothing, the air in spawn. So you could get frustrated, but really getting frustrated wouldn't resolve the issue. So it's important to take what they say for face value, but in the same sense, understand that you're really powerless and the only power you have is how you react. If I reacted negatively, I would amp up this individual. This individual has already proven to me he has poor communication skills because his instant reaction is aggressiveness. If he saw I made a mistake or I was doing something poorly and his intention is to win the game, he could try to communicate to me, hey, this is what you did wrong. If you try this, it may work better for all of us and we may be able to win. Positive reinforcement generally gets a better reaction out of people than being negative. But people with poor communication skills or poor conflict resolution skills jump to toxicity because it's the immediate fight or flight response. Now I know you guys think maybe I'm looking too deep into this Overwatch, you know, it's just people being angry at the game, which is true, but it all comes down to psychology anyways. And a lot of people, including my friends, have stopped playing the game because they're having too many toxic experiences. So I want to remind you guys that ultimately, you can't control what happens, but you can control how you react to what happens. Now, there's a lot of people, they're going to say a lot of terrible things, anything from racism to sexism to God knows what else. I've been called a lot of horrible things. I had to change my name from Bronstein to Nolly, just from all the anti-Semitic remarks. So by changing it to something more ambiguous, like Nolly, Nolly the Gnome, at least I don't have to deal with anti-Semitism anymore. My point is, people will go with any low-hanging fruit they can to be toxic. There's nothing really you can do. Ultimately, we need to band together as a positive community and find places we can go to propel each other upwards and remind ourselves that the majority of this community is are actually good people, morally good people, and people that just want to have fun, even if we don't always win. With that in mind, I want to remind you guys that there's a link to my Discord in the in the bottom description. I don't have any intentions other than I would love to play with some of you guys. I think it would be fun to share games with like-minded people that are mainly focused on having fun. And if we win, that's wonderful. And I think we'll have an even better time. But if we don't win, maybe we can learn something from each other. So if you'd love to join the Discord, I'd love for you guys to join. I think we can have a lot of fun playing these new heroes in Roll Queue. Uh, I hope to make a new video soon teaching how you can use Sigma to your advantage. I really enjoy him as a tank. He's a cool character. If you guys have any questions about overcoming toxicity or reacting to negative people, please leave that question in the comment. I'll be more than happy to answer. But until next time, I want to thank you guys so much for listening. And Nolly the Gnome, out.